What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how wide receivers can stop getting jammed off the line of scrimmage with some great wide receiver press release hand technique tips that you guys can use. So I hope this video helps you guys out. Hope it could teach you a few new things, but also, fellas, if you're a wide receiver and you would like 200 plus wide receiver route running, press release, catching drills, everything that you should be doing on the field, check out that very first link in the description below for our eight-week wide receiver on-field workout plan. It's eight weeks of daily on-field workout workouts for wide receivers with sets and reps broken down and a video example of each specific drill you should be doing. So check out that very first link in the description below. If you're interested, fellas, let's get started with this video. So when it comes to hand technique off the line, there are a couple things that you want to understand. Number one, we have to keep things simple. A lot of times wide receivers will come off the line of scrimmage and they try to do too much with their hands. I'm sure you guys have all seen, you know, the countless number of YouTube videos, the old school videos that are like 12 years old, the wide receiver coaches talking about, you know, you want to swat, rip your shoulders, swat, dip your shoulders, swim, move, whatever it is. Now, again, all that stuff can be great and all that stuff can be applied, but you need to have a plan of action off the line because so many times wide receivers are so worried about their hands. They're so worried about the jam of the DB that they don't go anywhere with their feet. Guys, you need to plan with your feet. You need to attack with your feet and the feet will set up the hand technique. But a lot of this has to do with having a good pre-snap process off the line of scrimmage and knowing what coverage the DBs run in and then what route you're running. So let's play this example full speeder. This wide receiver takes an inside release on this kind of like deep skinny post route, I guess, if you will. Maybe you could consider it like a corner post, but he takes an inside release on this. And that's very, very important to know. So you come up to the line of scrimmage and you see a DB who's lined up in head up press and you have to run like a post route, a dig, a curl. And we're going to show multiple examples of different hand situations and different jam techniques throughout this video. But I want to talk about this one first. So when it comes to picking a release off the line of scrimmage, a lot of it has to do with how the DB is lined up. So if the DB is lined up inside leverage and you have to run a post route, you're going to take the outside release because the DB's goal is to prevent the inside route. If the DB is lined up outside leverage, which means he's shaded to the outside. He's lined up a little bit shaded to the outside. If he has inside leverage, he's lined up a little bit shaded to the inside for those of you that don't know. But if he's outside leverage, his goal is to prevent the outside route. So you're going to attack him, then take the inside release, right? And then if he's head up, it's kind of like we have kind of pick your poison. You could take an outside release. You could take an inside release. But ideally on a post route, you would probably want to take an inside release. So that's the first thing that you have to identify. You have to identify the DB's leverage because that is what tells you what release you're going to take on the given route. Fellas, it's not based on the route what release you take. It is all based on the DB's leverage. Take what he gives you and take the most comfortable release possible. So if I'm taking this inside release, you got to understand which hand of the DB, this is where the hand technique comes into play, which hand of the DB prevents me from taking an inside release. So do you think it's going to be his left hand or this DB's right hand? It's going to be his right hand, right? Because we are trying to release to the inside. But if he gets a good jam with his right hand and seals me off, then I'm not going to be able to get off the ball. If he gets hands on me with his left hand, does that really matter? No, because the press release is all about just getting off the ball fast, keeping timing with my quarterback, and then being able to get into my route to maintain spacing on the play. I don't need to break his ankles and get him to be completely off balance every single snap. Yes, I would like to, and yes, maybe that should be my plan, but that's not a necessity. You just need to get off the ball and maintain timing. Separation is created on your stem and at the top of the route. So you see how this wide receiver, he gives this move to the outside. He's trying to get this DB to jump to the outside or maybe hesitate so he could take this inside release. So his plan of action is he's not even worried about this hand. He's not even worried about the two-handed jam. He's worried about this inside arm. His plan of action is I'm going to attack his inside arm. And you see how this wide receiver starts to swat he swats, but there's nothing there. That's totally fine, fellas. That's called having a plan off the line. You need to plan with your feet and you need a plan of action with your hands. Wide receiver coaches spend so much time, almost too much time on hand technique without coaching up the feet. The feet will set up the hands. Let's move him off his platform and let's take the inside release focused on beating that inside hand. So what are some moves that you can do with your hands, right? Because conceptually, that's what you want to worry about. And we're going to show an example of an outside release here in a second so you guys can see it the opposite way. Way, but your plan of action is, okay, I'm going to give him a jab, and then maybe you're going to take your left arm and swat his right hand. Maybe you swat him. Maybe you just take this right arm and club down. Maybe you rip underneath. Maybe you dip your shoulder and rip. There's no wrong answer to the hand technique, fellas. It just has to be efficient. The only thing that I don't like from a wide receiver is in this case when they take an inside release and they swat the DB's hand if he jams, and they take their right hand and lift it way over the top. Like they're trying to reach over the DB because that 
exposes your rib cage. As long as you keep your elbows tucked, not tucked to where you can't move, but as long as you protect your rib cage and you are on the attack and you have a plan, you will be successful with press. The feet will set up the hands. So let's play this again full speed one more time, and then we're going to show another example of an inside release before we get to that outside release example and talk about some different movements you can use. So let's look at this example here because now... Here's what everybody's going to say. Okay, I beat his inside arm, but he's still going to recover with this outside arm. And some DB coaches will say that, oh, well, that's good technique. That's what we want, right? We want to get hands. We want to jam. We want to give him a good pop and get hands on him throughout the stem of the route. So there is something called a secondary release, right? So a secondary release, it's not like the footwork release that you would think. It's not like, you know, doing a crossover move. It's more so about your hands. So let's play this clip full speed. Let's watch what happens. This wide receiver does take an inside release. He This DB comes kind of shows his outside hand, but he doesn't. So the wide receiver, this DB gets hands and recovers with his outside hand. So let's watch what this wide receiver does. So he comes off the ball, DB's able to recover, he's getting hands. Watch, see what that wide receiver's doing the entire time throughout the route. He is fighting the hands throughout the stem. Something that I'll tell my wide receivers is you want to pretend like he's got like crap underneath his fingernails and you don't want him to touch you. Don't let him touch you. Don't let him touch you because that's what he is taught to do. Get hands to disrupt the timing and stay with you at the break point. So as a wide receiver throughout the stem, I need to constantly be battling. Now, here's another thing that you have to take into consideration when we're doing this because we know we got to beat his inside hand. If he doesn't get hands or if he does try to shoot hands, Either way, I have a plan to attack. But when he does get hands on me and recovers, please do not be running crazy tall. So many wide receivers run around DBs and they're running with an insanely tall pad level and all it takes is one good punch from this DB and a physical DB to knock us off balance. So fellas, have a plan and be constantly fighting hands throughout the route. Shrug his hands off, battle with the hands because your break is going to be at a landmark. So you know where you're breaking. The DB does not. So if we can still maintain my speed and I can fight hands constantly throughout the break when he recovers, that leads me to more separation. Because when I got when I hit my break point and this DB doesn't have hands, I'm pretty confident that we could outrun this guy. I'm pretty confident that we could separate. And that is the entire goal of the route. That's the entire goal of doing a press release. That's the entire goal of hand technique off of a press release. So let's play this full speed. So great job taking the inside release, having a plan with the hands, being prepared to fight the hands so we could get separation over the top. Easy money, deep post. Okay, so now let's take a look at this example here. So this is from like a camp combine, I, I, I would assume. I want to say this is a camp. Now, this wide receiver is going to be taking an outside release on a uh, inside breaking route, like on a dig route. So remember, when it comes to press releases, you have to understand conceptually what this DB is trying to accomplish, how we can work my release to keep the best timing and to keep the best spacing on the play. And what tells you to choose that release is this DB's alignment. It is not the route. It is not where you're at on the field. Well, some cases it's where you're at on the field, but it's, it's mainly based on the DB. It's based on his left leverage, the space he has from you, and the coverage. So we come up to the line of scrimmage, and we see that this DB is inside shade press coverage, right? So if he's inside shade, that means he's like shaded a little bit to the inside. That means he has inside leverage. He does not want to give up a slant, a dig, a post, force everything to the outside to that sideline. So with my release off the ball, my goal is going to be attack him. Since he's up close, I need to give him a quick move to the inside, trying to move him off this platform so I could take an outside release freely. Now, a lot of wide receivers will just take off and run, but that's going to cause this DB to get hands on us, even that recovery hand, that right hand, and be able to squeeze me to that sideline. So we need to set him up. We need to attack him inside. So now, what hand of this DB is going to prevent the outside release or a free outside release? I just said it. It would be his outside hand. So in this case, his left hand. So let's watch what this wide receiver does. He attacks. This DB throws a two-handed jam, but he's able to shrug it off break down and run this dig route and slip underneath. That's a textbook example of taking what the DB gives you. You take the outside release when he's inside leverage, even if you have to run an inside breaking route. You could work to stack him and get over the top of him, or if this DB's right on your hip, you slip under like he did and throw by. So let's watch his hand technique here. So he attacks him inside, DB is throwing two hands, but you watch, dips the shoulder, shrugs the arm off, and he beats the outside hand. He's off the gym. He is off the press. He had nothing to worry about with this DB's right arm. Now, let's say this DB has a better rep, though, because this isn't the greatest rep from this DB. Let's say he keeps his feet moving because DBs don't want to be flat-footed. DBs don't want to hesitate. Like this right here, DBs should be staying active feet in this case. They should keep their feet moving. They should be balanced. They shouldn't be leaning back. 
Now, let's say he does have good technique and he is shooting two hands. He's in a more strong position. Guys, the same principle will apply. Who cares if he gets this right hand on us? We can fight the hands throughout the route. Just have a plan to beat the arm that is going to prevent me from taking the release that I want to take with my pre-snap process. The pre-snap process dictates which release I choose. That tells me what hand I have to beat. So let's play this again full speed one more time. And again, remember, if you have to run like a dig route, let's say he has to run the same route, but this DB's head up coverage. He's head up right in front of us. He doesn't have a leverage. You would probably attack him outside and take the inside release and the hand would switch. You would have a plan to beat his inside hand. It's all based on the DB's leverage and that's what we should do with my hands off the ball. Let's play this again full speed one more time. Great job of that wide receiver attacking inside, beating the outside hand and then slipping underneath to win on that dig route. All right, fellas, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. Always appreciate the feedback. It's always great to hear from you guys. And again, fellas, if you would like an eight-week wide receiver on-field workout schedule, everything wide receivers should be doing for route running, press releases, the works, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to get you on that. I'll see you guys next time.